questioning what is out of sight. He is the answer. He is the light. And if you have felt the weight of sin, bound by the shame that's hemmed you in, he'll break the chains. He will
of the valley. So let's all stand as we sing this morning, if we can. Uh, page 17, Lily of the Valley. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my the lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to to my soul. Oh, he all my griefs has taken and all my sorrows for. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tire. I have all for him forsaken and all my idols torn. From my heart and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me, and Satan tempt me so, through Jesus I will safely reach the goal. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's a fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Verse 3. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I live by faith and do His blessing will. A wall of fire about me, I have nothing now to fear. With His banner He my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory, to see his blessed face where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's a lily of the valley, that bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Amen. Y'all did good. I messed it up, but hey. Uh, uh, it was just in that one place. I couldn't get I couldn't get all the words in there for some reason. I don't know why, but I couldn't. Uh, Miss Janelle, will you open us in prayer this morning, please?
We just need to praise the Lord for His abundant blessings. Amen. Because it was Him who afforded us, well, we the, uh, the means in which to do it. Uh, the church is uh, needs some candy and her prizes for stuffing eggs for the Easter picnic, and we need them through uh, Wednesday, April the 5th. So, you know, uh, if you'd be able to help us with that, we'd appreciate that. Um, gospel Nights. The Mark Trammell Quartet is going to be at Gospel Nights on Friday night, April the 7th at 7.30 down at Inspiration Church. Uh, it's a good time. Of one accord is the host of that every, on the first Friday night every month. So, uh, you know, we, we thank the Lord for Him and, and all that they're doing uh, and the, the people that they're trying to bring in so, anyway, ten bucks a person to see Mark Trammell Quartet is a bargain. Anywhere you go. So, you know, and, and you're going to receive a blessing by going. And so, uh, you know, I hope that, that you'll go, of course. Uh, and then that next day is... Uh, we will have our annual Easter picnic and it's going to be uh, Saturday, April the 8th and we're going to start at 11. Okay? Uh, hopefully the way I haven't even looked if on the extended forecast or what, we're just praying that the Lord's going to work it out and we're going to have a day that day like we had this morning. Amen? Uh, we, I doubt that we are going to be finished in, in order to be able to utilize the back. So what we may do is just pull some tables out and, and put them up out here in, in, the, in the parking lot and, uh, everybody and everybody bring their lawn chairs and we, we can, we'll pull some games down and things and uh, that the kids can have or whatever and, or if you want to play, you can play. It doesn't make any difference. And uh, then, and of course, we'll have an egg hunt uh, across the street like we always do and, and things uh, as long as one of the dogs it, that runs around here isn't laying out there. So, uh, <laughs> So anyway, uh, you know, we're going to do those things and uh, I, just because we don't have a place and, and I really, I can't see it to have breakfast back here, I still can't uh, look and, and, and sit, up, sit here and not have a sunrise service. Now, our sunrise service, we may have it in here, but we're going to have it. You may be on your own to go eat breakfast uh, and those things, and then we'll have Sunday school and church service that morning. So, you know, we have to do as we got to do, but we're going to do it. Okay? So, uh, and of course, on the back, there's always something that's worthy of your reading. So I hope that you'll take an opportunity and read it. Uh, so let's take our, our uh, uh, Heavenly Highway hymns, our second edition. Turn to page number 35. Blessed assurance. Isn't it, isn't it good to know that we have blessed assurance? Because of our Heavenly Father above. Amen. So we're going to do the best we can on this. Blessed Assurance, page 35. We'll sing all three verses. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation. 
purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Verse 2. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture, now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Verse 3. Blessed submission, all is at rest, it works. Uh, I am my Savior, am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior.
listening every moment to the Spirit call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Brother Phil, standing. Mm. Here we stand this morning, Lord. Just take his offering and do with it what you will. Pledge for the church, the people who need it, or whatever, Lord. We love you, we trust you. Just thank you for giving us a little bit back to what you give us every, every day. For we love you and trust in the name of all name Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so Yeah. 
fat. All my life. All of our lives. He's been faithful. You know, in, the, in that first chapter of the book of Romans, and after introducing the message, and the message, and his own motives, we find the, that the Apostle Paul turns the spotlight on the gospel that he's going to be writing about. In just two verses, we are given one of the greatest summaries of the gospel ever written by man. And it's in these verses that we can see a clear declaration of God's power and purpose in the gospel message. So if everyone will turn to the book of Romans chapter 1, and as you find your place, let's stand as we read God's Word this morning. It's just two short verses. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Yeah. Let's pray. Lord, we do come thanking you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would open not only our minds this morning and our ears, but our heart as well to receive what you have for us today. And Lord, that by receiving it, Lord, it would be that that we can take beyond the confines of this place, Lord, out into the world and then to just be a witness of it to others that need to hear. And it's with that that each and every one standing said, Amen. We can be seen at this point. You know, Paul's statements about the Gospel, they begin in a very strange way. Or a strange fashion. You know, we find that out of the blue, he tells us that he is not ashamed of the Gospel. In our day, this sounds kind of awkward. Why should we be ashamed? Perhaps a little understanding of His culture would help us to understand why some might have been ashamed of preaching the message that Paul had been given. There are at least four reasons why some would have been ashamed. And I believe we'll find within these four reasons that we would find maybe there's a reason for today that there are those that are ashamed of the Gospel. First off, because of the moral condition of the death. We find Nero was emperor of Rome he was a wicked and a degenerate man. The city of Rome was a cesspool of sin and wicked living. The gospel that Paul preached was uh, diametrically opposed to everything that Rome was. Now does that not sound a little bit like our day to day? We can sit here and understand Rome was the capital. And if we look at the things that we just said, and we look at our day to day, and we look at some of those that sit in our capitals today, 
we find that they're not, but we're not much better than the day of Paul. Secondly, because Paul was a Jew, Jews were considered by many to be a subhuman race. They were fit for nothing but to be despised, mistreated, and enslaved. And ordinary Jews would have been tempted to shy away from the non-Jews. Now, we could even take our day to day and we look back, maybe not this very day, but what about those days that we saw during World War II? Concerning the Jews. Despised. Hated. Same goes. Reason three. Because the gospel that Paul was preaching was almost unbelievable. Think of it. The Savior uh, that Paul was preaching was a male member of the despised Jewish race. He was said to be the Savior of man. He claimed to be the Son of God. Even God Himself. And yet, He claimed to be a man. Uh, his death was different than other men in that He died on a Roman cross, a symbol of shame. But in dying this death, He was said to have died for all men. And if that wasn't enough, this man was said to have risen from the dead the third day after his death. To many people, the claims of the Gospel were just too bizarre to believe. But they're true. They're true. Believe me. In that day, they were true. And in our day, they were true. It's true. Reason four. Because everywhere Paul went preaching the cross, we find that he was ridiculed, cast out, imprisoned, treated cruelly. Many would not even have been able to endure the shame of the cross. And with all these things in mind, it's easy to see why Paul would want to be clear about his commitment to the Gospel message. He would want these people to know that they were hearing from a man who believed the message that he was telling and he was willing to pay any price in order to share. Now that we know why some would have been ashamed, why was it Paul? After all, many in our day are ashamed of the gospel message. Why did he know that? What did he know that made him keep on going for the cause of God? What was it about the gospel that invigorated the apostle and, and kept driving him around the world preaching the same hated message? The answer to these questions is found literally in the truth that Paul reveals to us about the Gospel. In these two verses, the verses of our text, Paul reminds us <coughs> that we have a Gospel that's worth sharing. So let's see. First and foremost, we see the power of the Gospel. Paul tells us 
in these verses that the gospel is the power of God. It's not something, it's not Paul's power. And it's not man's power. But it is God's power. It is the power of God. That word power literally comes from a word that refers to the might, the energy, the force, and the strength that dwell within God. God. He could have revealed His power against sin in any way that He may have chose. He could have just wiped men off the face of the earth. He could have done anything that He wanted. Because after all, He is the all-powerful God. He can do anything that He wants to do. Therefore, it's a blessing to notice that when the Lord moved to do something about sin, He exercised His power in sending men just like Paul to share the gospel of grace. Nowhere is the power of God so visible as it is in the gospel of Christ. Think about it. When God takes a lost sinner, the woman caught in the act of adultery and saves him by his grace and makes him a new creature, that is a powerful thing. Jesus put it, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. As he spoke to that woman. God could have sent us all straight to hell if he wanted. But he instead chose to send us his love wrapped up in his son. Lord Jesus. I thank the Lord that He loved us first. He gave us the most precious gift that we could ever have received. All because He loved us. We have to notice that Paul's message is the gospel of Christ. We need to make no mistake about it. There are many different gospels being preached in our day. Just as in the day of Paul. There's a gospel of religion that says, well, just turn over a new leaf. There's a gospel of materialism that says, well, you know, your worth is determined by what you have. Gain is the goal of life. There's a gospel of liberalism that says, I'm okay and you're okay. God accepts us like we are and will take us to heaven if heaven really exists. We find there is the gospel of society that says, 
do as you please. It's your life. Do what you want. But, however, therefore, and all those other conjunctions that take us to another place, we find that Paul's message, on the other hand, says, you're a sinner. And if you die in your sins, you will go to hell. However, therefore, wherefore, God loves you. And He sent His Son, the Lord Jesus, into this world. Jesus died for your sins. And He rose from the dead. And if you will place your faith in Him, then you can and will be eternally saved. Now tell me, which gospel are you trusting in today? Not only do we see the power of God, but we see the purpose of the gospel. Why did God go to such lengths for mankind? Why did He give up His Son to die on the cross for the sins of humanity? The primary answer is very simple. It's the same answer that we came up with earlier. And it will be the same answer that was good yesterday, that's good today, that will be good tomorrow. And that answer is because, and it's simple, and it's and it is basically, he loves us. He loves us. And there's 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 a little more to it than that. God's plan and God's purpose in giving the gospel message is salvation. The, the God's plan for the gospel message is salvation. God's plan for what He wants us to understand is that it's salvation. The plan that Paul was talking about, the very gospel of God it, that he was talking about was for salvation. The gospel that we're that we're talking about today is for salvation. The gospel that will be preached and be given and testified and witnessed about tomorrow is for salvation. And why? Because God loves us. God loves us. The word salvation is a very important word. It means safety, preservation, deliverance. It carries the idea of being rescued from all harm and danger. God's desire in saving sinners is to forever deliver them from spiritual death, spiritual defilement, spiritual deception, and spiritual destruction. Unless we forget the end of all sinners outside the Lord Jesus Christ is the fire of hell. God's purpose in giving the gospel is to change man's destination in eternity and his life here on earth as well.
You know, the primary purpose of the gospel message is the salvation of the lost. Why did Jesus come here? To save those that were lost. John the Baptist described him in, uh, in the Bible as saying, Behold! The one that cometh to take away the sins of the world. You know, he, he was proclaiming Him as Savior. Paul is claiming Him as Savior. Down through the ages, He has been proclaimed as the Savior. Today, the Gospel message proclaims Him as the Savior. Tomorrow, the gospel message will still proclaim him as a savior. It was good enough for our fathers. And it's good enough for us. And it's good enough for those that come after us. Amen. And you know, really, I, I don't know about you, but. I truly enjoy the fact that I'm saved. That I, I, I don't have to look forward to hell. But now I have a place, a heavenly hope, where my treasure is being laid up. And that is my home. I'm just passing through this place. But while I'm here, I'm sent here. I'm kept here. You know, it would make more sense to me. And that's part of the reason why it's not that way. It makes more sense to me that when a person gets saved, God take him on up. Right? He doesn't have to endure any of this stuff. But you know, God has a purpose. Yes. He has a purpose in leaving us here. And that purpose is for us to testify of the Gospel of Christ to others. We can't help what they do with it. They may do nothing with it. But that's not our responsibility. Our responsibility, though, however, is to share that gospel message with a lost and a dying world. And boy, if in Paul's day, if the world was a lost and a dying world, man, just think about today. Just look at, all we got to do is look around. Turn the news on. Listen to the radio. Open a newspaper if, if they're still being printed. I mean, you know. Open the internet or whatever. And just look at what's going on around us. We need the gospel of Jesus. You know, I'm grateful to the Lord that He gave us a salvation that we don't have to worry about. It is good for as long as He lives. Now think about that. He always was. Jesus put it this way in the first put in the first chapter of the book of Revelation. He says, I am he that was and is and is yet to come. So if that's Jesus, then the gospel is that which was and is and is still yet to come. Even in our lost and dying world. 
He gives us a salvation that we don't have to worry about. What about the plant? We said that salvation was God's plan. He has a plan. Well, what is the plan of the Gospel? Well, verse 16 tells us in no uncertain terms exactly how this Gospel message of salvation is activated. Notice what it says. He says, For I am not ashamed of the Gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Now here's the activation of it. To everyone that believes. So you want to know what turns the salvation on? Believe. To believe. It is available and it's sitting there. It is the gift of God that God is presenting to all mankind. And He's holding it out there. He's trying to get it to you. But it's only good. It's only received. It can only be taken by the one that believes. To every one that believes. It makes it perfectly clear that biblical salvation does not involve complicated religious rituals or ordinate and elaborate religious exercises. Salvation is the product of faith and faith alone. Coming to church, singing three songs, take an offering up, get a message and go home, is not going to save you. But if you'll open your heart and believe the message that's given, it will lead you to the point, to the place where you'll finally, a person can finally realize that they need Jesus. This is the point where a lot of people stumble. People like to do things for themselves. They like to feel that, that they have a part of everything in their lives. But in the matter of salvation, the sinner can have no part. It's all God. All the what? Jesus made a statement in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The world wants us to believe that there's no absolute truth. That we can walk in gray and that we can turn around and we can have whatever we think truth is, is true. Now, I don't know how many people that the world thinks are that stupid. But there are a lot of stupid people out there because they believe that. They believe, hey, you know, whatever. I can do whatever. I can say whatever. And when it's all said and done, because I'm a good person and because I may have given to the poor or helped somebody or done this or done that, I got it made. I'm going to hear those precious words. Welcome home. 
Well, I hate to bust any of that bubble, but that ain't true. That's man's conjuring of living in gray, walking a fence post or a fence top of life and falling off wherever's convenient for the day or for the moment or the instant of their life. Instead of making a proclamation, Jesus is Lord. In Him I trust. In Him I put my faith. In Him I believe. And in Him I will always believe. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through this place. I have a heavenly home awaiting me that Jesus has prepared for me that no one can take from me. And then taking whatever the world can dish out of that. So I'm here to tell you, the world's not afraid to just reach up and slap you in the face. The world's not afraid to call us stupid. You believe that junk? You believe that stuff? You really think that's true? Well, let me tell you. One of us is right. And I know I am. That Jesus is the only way that we're going to get to heaven. Period. Now you can like that or not. But that's the message of the Gospel. Or part of it anyway. We look and we find in this salvation comes to the person who's willing to simply receive the message of Christ and to receive it by faith. You know, you don't have to have something that you can touch, feel, smell, taste, hear. You just accept it by faith. You believe it by faith. You live it by faith. You'll die in it by faith. You'll hear welcome home because of your faith. I'm thankful that the Lord kept His gospel inexpensive. Hey, there's nothing, there's nothing less expensive than free. And easy to understand. It's simple. Nothing in this world is going to allow you the opportunity to go to heaven. Only believing in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So, easy to understand. And yet, my question for us today is, what are we trusting in this morning? Are we trusting in the things of the world? And if you are, then I have a bridge that you can buy. Because you can't trust the things of this world. thing you can trust in is our Heavenly Father above by what He did in giving us Jesus as Savior and by the very act of what Jesus did on the cross at Calvary. 
We have to believe in the cross. Not the two pieces of wood. I'm not saying that. But it is believing in the cross in what was accomplished by Jesus on the cross as He shed His dying last drops of blood for the remission of our sin. So that we wouldn't have to. And it's the only sacrifice that for one, pleased God. And two, was accepted by God. For you and me. plan of the, of the gospel, but there's a pledge of the gospel. This great saving gospel message is for every single person in the world. There, there, you don't have to do this out of the other to get it. You don't have to clean up in order to get it because you'll never get it. Because there's no way that we can clean up enough to get it on our own. No one is beyond the reach of the Gospel of grace. No one. Revelation chapter 22. And in verse number 17, it says, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is of thirst come. And whosoever will let him Take the water of life free. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life free. The message is the same. All Jesus said is just come. Just come. You don't got to clean yourself up. Just come. You don't have to straighten out all the... the, the, the the, the things of your life just come. Because you can't straighten out the things of your life. You can't clean up enough on your own to get it. But if you'll come and you'll believe and put your faith and your trust in Me, Jesus says, I'll clean you up. I'll straighten you. Your life up. Now, is it meant that life's just going to be hunky dory? <laughs> no. Was life hunky dory in Jesus' day? No. But He will enable us to go through it. By His power. By His grace. By His mercy. We can go through this life. And we can pass over into the other life still believing that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. John chapter 6. And in verse number 37. It says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And 
him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. I'm not clean enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not where I should be. Jesus doesn't care about any of that stuff. All Jesus believes and all He knows is is that all those that the Father give me, I will take. And I will no wise cast them out. So that's a good thing for you and me. It's a good thing. The pledge of the Gospel is that anyone who hears the message and needs the cure can be saved by God's precious grace. Anybody. Well, what about the what about the the one that that did this? Anyone. Well, what about the murder? Anyone. Well, what about Hitler? Anyone. If they believe. If they believe. Many have labored over the term that's found uh, here in at ends verse 16 that says to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But let me tell you something this morning. That shouldn't bother us. It shouldn't it it it, 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 it shouldn't put any any uh, stipulations or doubts in us. God didn't give the, God didn't give the gospel to the Jew first in reference to priority because they didn't want it. They declined that message. He gave the gospel to the Jew first because it was in reference to time. It was a time reference. He had been dealing with the Jewish people for thousands of years. And when He sent His Son into the world to be the Messiah of the Jewish people, they rejected Him. John chapter 1, verse 11. Now the Lord has turned to the Gentile folks, to the Gentile peoples of the world to offer them salvation as well. And for you and I, we ought to be thankful for that. Because that's us. Salvation is available to every person on the face of God's earth. No race. It doesn't matter. Black, red, yellow, white, green, pink, yellow, and purple polka dots. It doesn't make any difference. The gospel of grace is, 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 is given to any person. It doesn't make a difference if we're tall, short, skinny, fat, anywhere in between. Man, woman, boy, girl. And you know, we could, we could even receive it on our deathbed. Makes no difference. It's available. These verses make it clear that salvation is for anyone, regardless of their race, social standing, their education, their ability, their wickedness, and man, we could go on and on and on. It's for anyone that will believe. What are you going to do is believe. Have that childlike faith. 
There's nothing that can prevent anyone who wants to be saved from getting saved. You can live in a communist country that will throw you in jail forever and ever and ever. But beside your bed, or maybe laying in your bed at night, that little person or that person in China or North Korea or Iran can turn around and can within their heart, within their mind, they can turn around and make a profession of faith to Jesus and their son. Pledge of the gospel is for every man everywhere. And I thank God that it's that way. Because there was one day in this, this somehow laid out plan of God that I believe that I got saved. same for each and every saved believer in this room. The power of the gospel, the purpose, the plan, the pledge, the product. Yes, there's a product of the gospel. It produces Something. You cannot receive it without being changed. Because if you receive it and you're not changed, chances are you didn't receive it. Because there's got to be fruit. There has to be something that's there. product of the gospel in the life of the believer is righteousness. You see this righteousness is made. You know, in this righteousness that is produced in the life of every believer, man has two great problems. Isn't it always that way? Man's always got a problem with something. One, he thinks he's righteous as he is. And therefore, he's acceptable to the Lord. I do good things. I give to the poor. I do this. I do that. I serve my community. I do all these things. But have you accepted Jesus? I'm a good person. I've done this and that and the other. This, that, and the other is not going to get you to heaven. I'm sure that this, that, and the other appreciated it. But it ain't going to get you to heaven. Secondly, the second problem that man has is he is absolutely wrong about number one. Man is not righteous. And he cannot produce righteousness by self-will at his own works. However, we thank the Lord that there's always a however. However, when faith is placed in the Gospel message and Jesus is believed in the heart. God takes the sinners and declares man, woman, boy, girl, child to be righteous. Because of something we've done? Because of what He did. We are declared righteous when we believe in Him because of what He did. Calvary's cross. Because what Jesus did, when we put our faith in Him, we put our belief in Him, we trust Him as Lord and Savior, now God sees us 
as he sees him righteous. Are we perfect? <laughs> not by any stretch of the imagination. We're not perfect. But we're positionally righteous. Man cannot do what man cannot do by effort, God does by His power. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 in verses 9 through 11 it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, not extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye were washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. It's not us. It's Him. Simply stated, everything man looks for in religion, peace with God, acceptance by God, a right relationship with God are all given to the believer when he receives the gospel message. This is a message worth sharing. Once we realize and we finally figure it out that because of our belief and trust in the Lord Jesus, we have a message worth sharing. Because we are the benefactors of the very grace and the mercy of God. Now, I don't know about you, but to me and my little finite mind, that's something worth telling other people about. Amen? It's a message worth sharing. Also, man has always got a problem with the phrase from faith to faith. What does that mean? Well, basically, it, re it simply refers to the fact that the believer's life is to be one of faith in God and his life is lived in faith. The righteousness of God is revealed in the believer's life from the beginning of faith to the ending of faith. I know when the beginning is day I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's the beginning of my faith. Now where's the end of my faith? Well, I don't know. As far as I, 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 I can tell from what the Bible says, if my eternity is to last forever with Him, then my faith is going to last forever. So, you know, I count that there's no end to Amen. As the verse concludes, faith is to be the way of life for the child of God. Short, simple. Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. To the Jew first, also to the Greek. For therein 
is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. You know, we've been given a gospel. For one, that's worth believing. And two, it's worth sharing. Because after all, we got it because someone shared it. They got it because someone shared it. They got it because someone shared it. They got it because someone shared it. Someone gave the message. Someone believed the message. Now someone is going to give the message. That someone is going to believe. That someone is going to give a message. That someone is going to believe. That's the gospel message. We, 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 we need not be ashamed of it. We all we all we are told to do in the Great Commission at the end of the book of Matthew is to go and tell somebody. Yeah. Go and tell somebody. Go and tell somebody. How hard is that? You go and tell somebody. Hey, Jesus loves you. Do you know He's prepared a place for you if you'll believe in Him? It's a gospel message. Oh, but... They may slam a door in my face. They may turn their back on me. They may, they may cuss me out. They may hit me. They may whatever. Well, so what? You're not responsible for what they do with it. You're responsible to tell them. The questions as we bring these thoughts together are these. Are you trusting in the Gospel of Christ for salvation? Are you sharing the Gospel like Paul did? No matter what may happen? Are you ashamed of the Gospel of Christ? Does it, do, 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 does it, do you feel ashamed or, or do you feel out of place by telling somebody else? The same message that was able to save then is the same message that can save now. The same power that worked in Paul's day is the same power that's working in our day. All we need to do to see the Gospel work in power is to believe it and to share it. Believe it and share it. When you do these things, God will do the rest. All He wants us to do is to believe it and to share it. What will you do with the gospel message today? Will you be ashamed? Or will you share it? It's pretty simple. If we believe in what God has done for us, by the very sacrifice of His own beloved Son on the cross at Calvary. And we believe that by the shedding of blood comes the remission of sin. But it has to come only by the perfect sacrifice. 
Do you realize that on the Day of Atonement, from the very beginning of time until the very day of Jesus' sacrifice, that there had to have been millions of little lambs slain. Sin transformed to that land on Atonement Day. That had to be atoned year after year after year after year after year after year. But when the Lamb of God was slain, that perfect lamb when Jesus was sacrificed. That's what God did. He sacrificed His Son for you and me. It was good then. It's good now. It's good forever. Once and only once did it have to be done. Now, simply by our belief in Him, are we may are we what we ought to be in the eyes of God? All because of what Jesus did on the cross. He lived, he died, buried, rose again in a newness of life. Sits at the right hand of the throne of God, providing intercession for you and me. By what he did, we are also as believers committed to be righteous in the eyes of God. Are we perfect? Not by any stretch of the imagination. Are we going to stumble? Yep. Are we going to fall? Yep. Do we have the power to get up? Yep. We sure do. All Jesus said about the way is that there, there's only two ways. There's a broad path that leadeth to destruction and there's a narrow way. He didn't say the narrow way was going to be free of potholes and rocks and those things that can cause us that we might have to watch for. He didn't say it was going to be a perfectly clear path. He just said it's a narrow way because few that find it. Now what our job is today is to be one of the few that have found it. Then to be one of the few that shares it so that we can be one of the few that can spend it together with them in heaven. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What about you? What about us this morning? How do we apply this? Preacher, you said we can apply this stuff, this, this everything that we that that's presented and that is of God, that we can apply it to our life. How do we apply this to our life? Don't be ashamed. Share. Tell somebody.
and then tell somebody and then tell somebody that's all we got to do let's all stand dear heavenly father lord we do come thanking you lord today lord we thank you for the opportunities that you give us lord we thank you for the very uh precious uh time that you give us to be here on this earth lord that we can be able as believers to touch the lives of someone just by telling them about Jesus. Lord, we can bring a smile to Your face by not being ashamed and telling someone the good news of the gospel of Christ. Lord, I pray this morning that You would help us to do that. Lord, help us to be able to stand within the matter and the manner in which You would have us to stand. Lord, that You would Use us as only You can. Lord, I pray that even in this invitation time, that Lord, that You can be able to help us to see just exactly what You would want us to see and to understand about this thing of spreading the gospel. Lord, I pray that in this uh, invitation time, Lord, that You would use it as only You can. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Well, we're going to be back this evening. We're going to continue in uh, our study in uh, Ephesians, uh, and I hope that you know you come and and avail yourself. Uh, uh, I would like to. To be able to, I'm glad that that you watch this. If you're going, if you're watching it on YouTube, I'd love to have you in church, so I could hug your neck, shake your hand, and things. But uh, any way, just keep watching and be with us here at Calvary Baptist Church.